Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by Seeky. This is episode 342. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate. Whoa. Hello, uh, hi, hello to anybody new. Welcome, welcome. We we accept all here, uh, except really Mets fans. But everyone else, you're fine. Welcome to the crew. Um, yeah, sweet, sweet week, man. Sweet two, three weeks actually. Technically. Have you recovered? I was going to ask you. Have you recovered? Finally, I feel like I'm not even kidding. I feel like probably yesterday. Maybe the day before is like my first day back, feeling good. Got back into the gym and like started to wake up at a normal hour without feeling dead. So it it's nuts, man. I'm knocking on 30. I'm knocking on the door for 30. So it's just like the recovery time has really, really slowed down. Really slowed down. It's insane. So I think I, I told you, or maybe I had mentioned to you when we were out there in Phoenix, that I can't, I can't sleep on red eyes. And yeah, I was going to ask you, how'd that go? It was not good. I maybe uh, slept for like an hour. I think I at least fell asleep. So like that's counting for something, but I, full I can't, flight. uh, what do you mean? It's like every seat was full. Oh, full flight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. just about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They were making those announcements Dang. beforehand. So there's really no room to like spread out or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can't like I like I said I maybe got a little bit of sleep on the on the flight back from the WBC, but could not uh, could not get a full night's sleep in. Um, so you when were I got wearing you were wearing sweats like that, it seemed like the comfy. I right tried to move. put myself in the best possible situation, but it didn't did choose matter. the right underwear. I feel like underwear is is a key factor in yeah. Being I mean, I'm always I'm always not. wearing the right underwear. Like it's that's never an issue. That's You're telling issue. me you have. Okay, I take you it have back. Prime I have, underwear through and through, no, no, no matter what. Like when it when laundry day is around the corner, and I'm like, yeah. it's slim pickings. I do have like two or three that I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah, like, just I, last I, resort. I could go with that. Like nothing wrong with it. They're just not comfy. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I get back and I have I have work that morning. Like I start work that morning, so I get back at seven a.m. Actually, we got back a little early. The 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 pilots were hey. they have they had they brought their A game that day. We got back like six forty five. And I've got work that morning and I was just worthless, dude. I, I mean, I worked the day, but then I, I fell asleep uh, early that night and slept in till I think two on Saturday afternoon. Wow. So all that to say a week at the WBC really did me in. I, I can't speak for you, but for me, I was, I was worthless. Wow. I, um, I feel like on the other, like the internal side, I feel like I'm just now getting, getting back as well. You know, like oh, I had, a, to, had a cleanse for sure. Had, yeah, I've had salads, wraps, veggies. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I went to lunch yesterday with my sisters and there's a spot like called like Postino out here. And it's definitely like a chick place. It's like soup, salad, wine paninis cheese boards stuff like that and i'm just like i don't know what i'm gonna eat here but i got a panini and i chose deliberately chose a side salad instead of the side homemade chips like the homemade potato chips so your boy's on the up and up that's all i can say because it was a rough rough week or so of questionable menu decisions I'm proud of you, though. Proud of you for being on the come up. The pod's on the come up. Shout out new pod artwork. Yeah, dude. Yes. Shout out. Looks sick. Shout out new new brand photos just all together. Got to throw those up on a graphic. We're 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 we're, we're official now at this point. I it kind of feels that way. Um, get on the vlog, by the way, if you haven't. If you guys haven't, yeah, seen check the out vlog. the vlog. We as That's we fun. already as we already alluded to, and if you somehow missed last episode we were out in phoenix for the first round of the wbc caught all the usa games had just 
an awesome time. Got to meet a lot of people. Saw yeah. a lot of different brands of baseball, which was really cool. Um, something that we also got to see this past weekend with the the uh, uh, quarters, semis, mm -hmm. championship in Miami. Got to see a lot of that on display, which was really cool. Um, so we're going to, we're going to dive into that, uh, just to kind of put a bow on this, because I, I know a lot of people are probably switching gears now, getting back into spring trainings for their teams. If they were following mm -hmm. WBC, cause I don't know about you, but I was completely out on spring training for the last three weeks. Full don't transparency. Really... I've, I've, I haven't even watched the full spring training game yet. Even no, when you I, were here and we were at spring training games, no, no. still haven't watched the I full was, spring training yeah. game. We were so in and out. Yeah. Just not even not yeah. even tapped in really. Uh, the last day was the was the who was that? That was Rangers, Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah. That was the most spring training I've caught the whole spring. So not even I'm a Yankee fan. It's not even I haven't even caught more than a couple innings with them. Like, I don't know. It's I, I'm okay with it though. I'm not bothered by it. I do, yes, feel a little behind. I feel a little underprepared. I'm a little nervous about our hot takes episode next week, but it's okay. Yeah, a little plug this is for the that. exception, you know? This is the exception. Little plug for the hot takes episode. That will be next week. The hot, the most anticipated episode that we put out every year. Uh, the most downloaded episode that we put out every year is always the hot takes episode that will be dropping next week, presumably. I mean, I guess we get back to normal schedule Monday and then mm. the opening days Thursday, right? Opening days Thursday. And then from that point forward, we should be back to two episodes a week. Praise the Lord. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we made it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to put a bow on this WBC. We do have some. We do have some voicemails that I want to get into. I Love hope that. they work. You, yeah, you, you never know. know. This is a it's, flip of the, flip of the coin. It's just the way it is. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted because we were talking about it just a little bit before we hopped on. Where is your Where is your mindset at in terms of excitement level for baseball post post WBC depression? Because I know I'm feeling that that hit me real hard mm -hmm. the next day yesterday the day following the the final um do you think you'll be able to switch gears in time like because I, I said for myself i think once we're done recording this episode i'll be able to f finally switch gears and get myself in the in the headspace for opening day where are you at it still doesn't feel real that opening day is right around the corner for some reason it always is something that like hits me real late uh, it's kind of like Christmas for me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's December, you know, it's near. And then all of a sudden, bang, four days before Christmas, you're scrambling to get gifts. That is kind of how I feel about opening day. So yeah, I, it just doesn't, hasn't, that just hasn't hit me yet. But as far as like this whole thing, I don't even know what to compare it to. Like, I don't know how to compare what this World Baseball Classic was for me to anything else. Like, I, I, I'm I, okay with other sports. Clearly, baseball is my number one. I did a couple brackets because we were doing a competition for work. So, like, March Madness, I'm in and out. We, you and I were kind of watching some games when you were here. But, like, it's not anything that gets me fired up. I think when I look at how much people get fired up for that and how into it they are for that. And people are like going to Vegas and watching all the screens and all that kind of stuff. I would say this is probably our version of that, but it's even more rare because it's not every year. So it's like, I don't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even compare it to playoff baseball because like postseason baseball, you have some of those stars that you're like, dang, I wish they were on a better team and could be in here. Cough, cough. <laughs> the two biggest stars of the WBC with Otani and Trout. So I don't know. I don't know what to compare it to, but it was the coolest, most fun. I feel like every baseball account I follow was just like throwing just stats of like percentages of 
how many people were watching compared to other events, compared to past baseball events. And it's like, this to me, it got me off of my stuff with, with the, and I, it'll probably come back, but what the rule changes, you know what I mean? Like it just, it allowed me to let that breathe a little bit. And I think just my overall feeling is that baseball is so here. It is so present. And now we have like, did you see that interview of, of the NHL player that was like, everybody's watching baseball right now. Like, this is what we want for hockey. And I'm like, yes, let's go. Like, finally, baseball is setting the standard. And I can't give credit to the MLB, some, but like, this is its own entity. So all the well, credit I, in the world is the WBC. It is sanctioned by the MLB, though. Sure. Right? Yeah. I mean, it has to if they're host sites and they're yeah. players and... You know, Tony Clark is passing out the medals for, you know, for those who don't know, he's the president of the MLBPA. So yeah, that was the most that was the most like back down to earth sobering image when mm. like you know Japan Japan wins the whole thing. Shohei's throwing his hat and his glove. The team's gathering down the line to get their their medals and everything. And then you see Rob Manfred, and you're like, oh yeah, this uh, is this yeah. is what we're going back to. Yeah. Like just the absolute highest of highs. And then you yeah. see Manfred and you're like, okay. All right. I guess the forefront. I guess this is what we're, what we're preparing ourselves for. Yeah. Uh, but no, you to, to go back to your earlier point, the beauty about this event and how you, it's so hard to really compare it to anything, if at all, is that at least for us fans, I, I mean, I won't speak for other, other, countries or whatever but for us fans it's hard to compare to postseason baseball because you and i both very well know that as teams start getting bounced fan base like mm-hmm. fan bases are already checked out yeah and you got football that's in you, you got know, full football fledged. in full swing and then yeah. as 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 fan bases teams start getting bounced they're like i'm checked out it's football time right and then you're let you're basically left with two fan bases yeah and some diehards who yeah. don't really have a dog in the fight like like ourselves, where it's like, we're, we're going to watch either way. Right. But if you've got Team USA, again, this is all based on whether if, if they go the distance or not. But assuming they do what they did, they make it to the finals. You've got an entire country following them the entire way, regardless what what fan or what team you're a fan of. Yeah. You're with them the entire way. And yep. that's that's what's beautiful. That's just one of the many things that make it beautiful is because you're you're bringing along a whole country for this three week long ride, and it all it all comes to a point on on Championship Day. And right, what we saw for Championship Day was about everything you could have hoped for. I I I got to be honest. I was just scrolling through. Um. I was just scrolling through Instagram like all week and I just saved some of the fun stuff that, that I saw. Um, so I'm not, I mean, there's tweets and there's other accounts and I'll just, I didn't, I'm not going to credit anybody. I just, I don't know if these numbers are accurate at all, but I mean, just looking through some of the stats, like we saw 70 million people, Tune in for South Korea versus Japan during pool play. Um, I, all I'm seeing is 12.5 million for the 2022 World Series. Uh, 93.6% of TVs in Japan tuned in for the Mexico versus Japan game. 93% of a country's TV box. I'm going to be honest. I had it in multiple screens because I was working and I was going back and forth between the living room and the office. So desktop, had I had the monitor on. I had I had the TV on. Um, there, there, I mean, more stats like the Japan versus Italy had 62 million. Um, the the what what is the highest world world series viewing was in 1980 with 54.5 so like the the growth 
of baseball is absurd. You talk about the, um, we, we put this post out, um, the Bryce Harper's game winning home run in the eighth inning to send the Phillies to the world series had 2.2 million views in five months. Trey Turner's game winning home run in the eighth inning to send USA to the WBC semifinals had four and a half million in three hours. This is insane. And to that point, I, I, I saw so many rebuttals saying, well, the world baseball, and I tweeted about it, that I, I saw so many people saying the world baseball classic is only important. Like the only people that care about it are the countries that already cared about baseball. And my response to that, and like I said, I tweeted about it. I said, I'll never, I'll never understand the world baseball classic hate only country quote, only countries that already like baseball care and make so much noise that other countries can't help, but start to care. It's March. When has baseball been celebrated this much before a season even started? Dude, like, how do you get, how, how does something become popular? You get a, you get a small following yeah, to yeah. get on board and then it just grows. Right. So like to sit there and pretend or, or act like this thing is only popular to the world. Yeah. If everybody cares about it, it's naive and it's ignorant because it's it has ridiculous. to start somewhere. It does. And I mean, you talk about team Mexico, this was their greatest tournament they've ever had. And you're they're they're saying it was the best team Mexico they've ever seen on a baseball field. Czech Republic being able to qualify, you know what I'm saying? Like you're getting you're getting new fan bases that way. Israel going in for it. Italy was fun to watch. Like these countries are gonna get better, and I think the the bigger this gets you're going to start to see a lot of MLB stars go back to their, you know, ancestry DNA and go find a way to go play for Italy. Go find a way to play for Czech Republic. If USA is stacked, go find another place. Randy Rosarena probably it, he qualified to play for Cuba if he wanted to, but he didn't. He played for Mexico and was the star of the show. Like this is how it goes. If you Lars Nupar going across and, and playing for Japan, like, this is so sick. There's nothing else like this. Keep growing. Keep getting better. It's exactly what we're looking for. Shout out Elijah Fluellen on Twitter. He said, to me, this is this is the... This is probably the tweet that most sums up the event for me. He said... Oh, I think I know what, you, what it is. I like it. Randy Rosarina has a whole country crossing its arms. Puerto Ricans everywhere have blonde hair, Shohei Otani wore a Czech Republic hat, and they sold out in hours. The U.S. blacked out when Trey Turner hit a go-ahead grand slam. The The WBC has been nothing short of incredible. It, it hits the nail on the head, dude. Like and the I, best I saw, WBC to date. It wasn't the tweet that I was thinking you were going to read. I saw a tweet, and I'm sorry I don't remember. I didn't save it. But it was something like... 20 teams playing for a couple weeks and it literally came down to the exact ending that everyone was hoping for insane Shohei versus trout i don't let's 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 not get ahead of ourselves let's not get ahead of ourselves we're definitely gonna get into that but before we go any further let's get into some of these voicemails again hopefully they work uh these are over the course of like the last week or so so some of them may be like excellent somewhat dated dated or whatever but the the sentiment's still there let's let's see what we got what's up guys uh this is jack long time listener um just giving you some thoughts on the whole world baseball classic the injuries stuff like that you know um i think yes you know injuries are unfortunate um but something you guys always touch on i agree is just the amount of people who are watching major league baseball players that don't usually watch baseball um and also baseball fans like me who watch baseball all the time who are getting to see players like mike trout play consistently as somebody who does not live on the west coast um and i think yeah injuries can be collateral but it's you know a marginal loss compared to the game that the game gets when something like this happens. Um, I mean, half of Japan watched the the Japan game 
um, that's just unheard of. Uh, and uh, if we're trying to look at growing the game and bringing new fans in, I think we just have to deal with, you know, uh, potential injuries, you know, for some of our best players. It's unfortunate, but, you know, and I feel badly for Mets fans, but uh, at the yeah. same time, you know, how many new people are going to be watching Mets games and talking about the Mets because of something like this. Um, and, yeah, again, unfortunate, but PR is PR. That's true. And um, people are talking about baseball in the off season more than they do in the regular season. So, overall, this is just a win for baseball and baseball fans. And, you know, it's growing a fan base and we're not changing the rules of the game. Um, you know, just my thoughts. You know, here I'm just rambling. So, um, anyway, would love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, and uh, thanks for putting together a great pod every week. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate nailed the it. message, Jack. Nailed uh, it, Jackie yeah, boy. Nailed it on all fronts. Speaking specifically to the injury issue, because that's been such a hot topic yeah. regarding this whole thing. I I told you, I texted you last night. I I was on one yesterday. I don't know what it what, oh, what you had possessed time. me yesterday. I had the time yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I had so many people. I put out that uh I I had posted the the tweet but then i had, i had slapped it on a, on a graphic yesterday and, and sent it out from our accounts and i said trying to wrap my head around the likely reality that so many u.s pitchers presumably opted out of the wbc due to contracts and money yet shohei otani has a 500 million dollar check waiting for him and he was out there every game and i had so many people in the mostly facebook some some instagram I'm not surprised by the Facebook response. That's just that seems to be just what happens there. It's just the boomer hub over there. And and I saw I saw so many responses of people saying, "Well, how can you how can you blame those players for maybe wanting to protect themselves from injury?" I said, "Okay, let's ask Gavin Lux how how his season outlook is looking for mm -hmm. this year." Because that was in spring training. Mm -hmm. So right. Like the whole injury conversation goes out the goes out the window right there. It starts yeah. and stops with Gavin Lux, and I and I hate to continue to use him as like a talking point, but it's a prime example of what we're talking about. Yeah. Sure, the Edwin Diaz thing is a freak freak scenario, and I don't even think we mentioned this on the last last episode, but people are saying, well, he wouldn't that wouldn't have happened if he if he wasn't celebrating. They're not going to be celebrating in in spring training. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, the Mets were pretending like they won the World Series. They were literally practicing their celebration for winning the World Series. The it, that's the that's the most idiotic, ironic part of this yeah. is it wasn't like the Tampa Bay Rays. It was the literal team that Edwin Diaz plays for right. was practicing winning the World Series, which right. is to me just a a, a stupid thing altogether. <laughs> that was but, a Buck Showalter move right there, man. I think it was wasn't that his first? No, that I think that was pre. Was that not Buck? I think that was the last year before Buck took over, mm. I, if I recall. Mm. If I recall, yeah, no, that was that had that would have had to have been pre Buck, because this was this past year was his first year, right? Yeah, who was who was there before? It was. Uh, I can see his face, dude. I can see his face. I'm blanking. This is gonna. I'm blanking yeah. hard. Someone's yelling at us. A lot of people are yelling at us right now. Honking on their horn, screaming randomly in the gym. Luis Rojas. That's there what we go. it was. That's I'm pretty I'm ninety. You think that was his sure. thing? That I, was his I'm thing. ninety nine percent sure. Because I don't think Buck would do something like that. And if yeah. he did, then shame on Buck. Yeah. Anyway, uh, your point being is that it can happen at any point. These injuries can happen at any point. The pitchers. I can somewhat understand. I understand guys backing out and not being entirely prepared. Oddly enough, ironically enough, when we went to that last game for spring training, the last day you were here, it was Rangers Dodgers and Clayton Kershaw was pitching. I think it was his first time out. Uh, so I looked it up because I, because I remember you and I were talking about it. And yeah. I was like, I wonder if this is, it was actually his second, second. start. Yeah. Okay, so, and I wonder how, how much he went in the in the first one, right? You know, was it a, a 35, 40 pitch limit or whatever? But 
the point being is that I think pitchers, you know, if you can wrap your mind around doing this and commit to this earlier, you can go about your offseason a little bit differently. I think it is, yes, much quicker for hitters to get on time and to get things figured out a little bit quicker. Um, so pitchers, I, I kind of understand not getting top guys this year. But I do hope, excuse me, I do hope a couple, you know, years from now when in 2026, when we're having the next one, I think you're going to see it a little bit differently, especially how much this one blew up. But there are certain circumstances. I think there are certain guys where I can say, okay, and bias or not, you know, Aaron Judge's quotes were, look, you know, like I the Yankees just gave me this captain role. They just gave me this big contract. We're in a drought for a World Series ring. I feel like I need to just commit to my team. I think that is something that I can 100% accept. I do think other fans outside of Yankees fans can understand that. So it it is a little give and take. But at the same time, you're still getting ramped up for the season. And you could argue that you're getting ramped up in a quicker better way and that's exactly what i was going to ask you You mentioned the thing about judge i was actually going back and forth with somebody on this in the comments yesterday is they were talking they were saying that again like how could you blame certain players for not wanting to like maybe they just want to get ramped up like with their teams and i said but i was like i can assure you that these players are going to be i i would argue better prepared for the season yeah, I, given, I think I agree. Given their ramp up process, playing against some of the world's best. Yeah, and you're not you're not going up against Johnny the Plumber. Yeah, who's well, trying to trying to make rookie speak ball for yourself? Czech Republic had plenty of plumbers and electricians on there, but <laughs> I mean, but like the, no, I get what you're the, saying. The it intensity, is, the intensity of the, the added game, adrenaline, right? Like that you can't, you just can't replicate in a spring you training can't, game. You can't take an at bat off during the World Baseball Classic. Right. So you're getting locked in that much sooner, that much right. quicker, that much more effectively. I, I have a hard time thinking yeah. that a guy like Mike Trout is not going to be better off come yeah. opening day than a guy who wasn't there for the world baseball classic the True. last three weeks and what's funny is it's a small sample size and i didn't really look into this at all with other guys but like manny machado first game back dinger glaber torres first game back rbi single to the left side it's like i think these guys just getting in tune and there could be a little bit of first gear feeling during the spring training right like you talk about some of these vets like that it both uh, all sports you talk about the NFL you talk about M- MLB like vets if they could skip half of the spring training or training camp they would because they 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 feel like it's just it's first gear and it's getting you know through the motions this is the exact opposite of that you're getting intensified baseball early and you're getting geared up for what you are going to probably feel throughout the season multiple times so why not get more of that experience under your belt? Pressure makes diamonds, baby. So like if you're in those pressure filled moments more often, you're going to end up being better. You're just going to learn from it. Whether it was a negative or positive result, you're going to learn from it. So yeah, I, I, I would love to see if we recap at the, the after the first month of baseball and we just grab all these guys, specifically hitters that performed in the at WBC. I'm curious to see where they sit compared to other guys. I would love if somebody was Com- able to put that together compared to other guys. And I would also love to compare it to the, if you're, if you're checking in a month into the season, I would love to compare that to each individual guys month in previous seasons. True. Very true. To see like maybe how possibly like notorious slow starters right. and how they're doing right. now. Yeah. Right. I would love to see that. Um, let's before we get too far down the line here, let's uh let's get another voicemail going. Let's get it. How we doing, fellas? AJ Torres, Danbury Camp it has been a while. But I gotta say, this world baseball classic has been absolutely incredible and 
The only ones that don't seem to be enjoying it are the ones, well, the ones that have their players involved, I guess. But I just want to say this, especially for, I know this is being a little biased as a Yankee fan, but guess what? Half the Met fans are just bitter human beings, <laughs> but so are the majority of Yankee fans. But True. I'm just going to state my case here. Because most New York fans are narrow-minded, I'll just say this. Do people forget that the general manager really calls the shots on if they play or not? Does anyone remember that Luis Severino was denied playing for Dominican Republic because Brian Cashman said, hey, dude, You've had arm troubles in the past, the last three seasons. It's a no for me. Nestor Cortez, unfortunately, he had something going on. I wasn't sure if it was a groin or leg injury or something. He pulled out. That happens. And if you go by, history says it, guess what? If you go by some of the players playing for the Phillies right now, Trey Turner, future man that signed the Declaration of Independence. I agree with you there, Kyle. <laughs> the Schwab. And who else? Talon Walker. He's been in the league so far 10 seasons, going on 11. He's only pitched 155-plus innings four times in his career. Granted, he'll say the last two years, but the Phillies could have looked at his history and said, you know, maybe not. So I think really the big thing about this is really just people with injuries. And let's be honest, the Reds had a Luis Sessa. I think he's a key pitcher, but what? Because they're not contending, nobody cares. The Mets fans only care because they want something to complain about. Because for the half of them, they deserve it. They deserve everything going against them. <laughs> and the other half of them, the ones I'm referring to, They'll never, ever be satisfied. They're bitter human beings. Nothing will make them happy. Hey, they might win a World Series in the next year, next two years. Still won't be enough for them because that's just what they are. To the people enjoying the World Baseball Classic, uh, and the game's still going on right now, uh, congratulations or better luck the next uh, couple years, I guess. Good game. And for the Mets fans, Stay bitter. You deserve it. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Oh, uh, man. That was gold. The pride of Danbury, it. Connecticut. I absolutely <laughs> love it. The mayor. AJ's the, the mayor. mayor out there, bro. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's kind of something that, that we talked about. I don't remember if it was off air or... or we're on, but yeah, I mean that those are certain things that just they're always going to be in play, you know. But the truth is, like, if I think what a lot of these players are saying, Trout and Mookie, and and just like some of the interviews, I mean, if you're if you're playing in the MLB, if you're on track to play in the MLB, you are you are top of the line. You know what I mean? And we are splitting hairs between the level of of ability. You have your elite guys, and then you have your guys that are there's so many in that middle section. Um, so I think there there was probably a lot of a lot of GMs that just didn't think this would be as big as it was. And they wanted to protect their guys. And there's certain names again you can make exceptions for. And you know, if Dodgers, you know, recommended Kershaw to pull out because he's winding down and because a lot of people are going to be buying Dodgers tickets to possibly see him for the last time. I can understand that, but I think now I, ge I genuinely think moving forward, I can't imagine the number of GM saying no being higher than, than it was this year. You know, I, I think there's going to be a lot of guys that just want to represent their country and it's two weeks of just amazing, insane baseball. And I think there's so many names that were probably learned by average, you know, modest baseball followers. You know, Lars Newtbar, solid. He ain't a superstar yet. You know what I mean? Merrill Kelly, no, didn't have the best couple outings, but 
he's not a superstar. And how many how many people can say they know his name now? Kyle Higashioka didn't get any innings, but he's the third catcher for Team USA. And it's like, you know what? There are some of these names that can can start to grow. And, and if we're talking about wanting to grow the gra- grow the game, build players' brands, you got to do it in different ways. It can't just be reliant on only the MLB season and that specific team. If you have opportunities like this, I can't imagine better ones. Yeah, I in terms of the the next WBC, I'm I'm truly hoping for just a sweeping wave of yeah. Mike Trout's post 2017 WBC. And what yeah. I mean by that is if you're unfamiliar, Mike Trout came out after the 2017 World Baseball Classic and basically uh, I mean I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but basically said like I missed out. I need to get in on that action mm-hmm. next time around. And not only did that, and and I think I tweeted about this too. I've just been on. I've just been on one on Twitter recently. I've just been tweeting out every single thought I have related to the WBC. Yeah, I gained so much respect for Mike Trout over the last three weeks because I did too. He he was he ultimately was a man of his word. He like I said, he came out after 2017, said I missed out. I admit that. I, I originally said no. I saw what it like. I saw the vision. I saw the path for this event. I I missed out. I need to get on board next time around. Commits to 2023. And you and I talked about this in the vlog when we were doing that, that first game recap, uh, where we were talking about how nobody got like, there were no subs. Nobody got pulled. Right. Mike Trout went out and played in every game. He he had every reason not to, he could have just been like, Hey, like I'll, I'll I'll show up. I'll play a few games. I'll I'll get my face out there for Mm -hmm. the brand, for the country, yada, yada, yada. He went out there and played every game, almost every inning. And not only that, he committed to 2026 already. Like he's Mm -hmm. already verbally committed to 2026. So any, I mean, not that I was like slandering Mike Trout for any particular reason, but anything that may have existed for me pre WBC related to Mike Trout in terms of well, like, what, what's his commitment level like? Is he just trying to go out there and play baseball? He's not really concerned about trying to win a championship. He's just, he's this super wonderbred guy that just wants to go out there, have his ABs, go out into the field for nine, and call it a day. Mm-hmm. All that for me, at least, is out the window. Like I, like I said, I, uh, I had a, I think to use a phrase you may have used while we were out there in Arizona, a paradigm shift surrounding Mike Trout. Um. And for me, it's it's completely changed. I mean, I'm even considering maybe getting getting one of his jerseys after the fact, like a tournament's yeah. over, and like I I may even I may even do that. So yeah, I I there was just a fire that got lit inside that dude that I he may not even admit this, but I don't. I, no one's ever seen that kind of emotion. No, out of him we, with an Angels we, jersey on. We unlocked a new Mike Trout. Yeah, this, these last. It's almost like a video game where it's like, oh, we finally got the the yeah. code for the new Mike Trout, and that was awesome. Yeah, to see. yeah, dude. And like it, I've never seen that emotion out of Trey Turner before. I, I've never seen those guys react that way. Have you ever seen an entire MLB dugout come out onto the field after a non walk off home run, a non game ending home run? No, well, I've never I, seen I that. Not. I have not. So I think there's a lot of good that came from the culture of other countries. The fire, the, I mean, the, you had guys in the, in the USA clubhouse that were talking about, you know, being embarrassed about getting their te- teeth kicked in from, from Mexico. And when they turn around and face Venezuela, they said, we have to match whatever energy that is. And it seemed like every other country had more energy than, than the U.S., this, I think, just kind of opened up a, a new level for a lot of guys. And, dude, somebody, what was, John Smoltz was like, I've I've thought Trey Turner's going to be an MVP. I still think he's going to be an MVP. And now I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I kind of see that now. Like, if he's capable of doing this throughout the season, like, yeah, I, I would agree. So, just seeing something that I think there's a new gear that's unlocked and it's not even relative to time of year or just spring training versus WBC. I think there is like a new fire inside of certain guys 
And there is John Smoltz again talked about on the on the commentary about there is an addiction to that postseason. Mm -hmm. And when you have anything that can replicate that type of energy, we may see Trout pop off this year just to get what he got these last couple weeks. Go get that same feeling. Never or know. maybe more may uh a, possibly a more vocal Mike Trout right. about wanting to wanting to get out of town because he's feel like he maybe. feels like the front office has like horrendously let him down. Maybe after promises of like we'll surround you with this or that, like yeah, yeah show hate, but like what else? What it, else are you doing? It could have could have adjusted his leadership style as well. Maybe he does become a little bit more vocal. Maybe it is less of lead by example and a little more of fire me up. You know, do some provide some antics that could get the rest of you guys going. It, I I just I I think there's a new thing that just unlocked within a lot of players. Mike Trout being the forefront. I hope I see it come to fruition throughout the season. Got uh, got another voicemail. I think we've got two left. All right. Hey, guys. First time caller. Just wanted a quick question. So obviously we saw a lot of emotion in this WBC. Um, kind of reminds me of the whole Let the Kids Play initiative the MLB did a couple years back. Do you guys see this as kind of an extension of that? Do you think it's going to carry over into this next MLB season? We're going to see a lot more emotion on the field. Or do you think, uh, you know, the traditional – unwritten rules are going to kind of bounce back and prohibit that from happening. I would love to see um, all the emotion on the field. You know, I'm a young fan, the way you grow the game. Um, I'm just curious on your guys' thoughts. Um, thanks. Bye. First time caller. I love that. Much love. Love that. Yeah. That's a fantastic question. My hope in response to that question, my hope is that, and it, for me at least as like a, as a content guy, I'm constantly thinking in terms of like social media and metrics <laughs> yeah. and content like that. Yeah. So for me, my hope is that these clips of Trey Turner, of Mike Trout, of Kyle mm -hmm. Schwarber, guys like that, I I hope that these are referenced out of the gate for the MLB season. Somehow, some way, I don't know how you do that, but to just keep that fresh in people's minds because I don't want people to forget the things they saw, the things mm -hmm. they experienced whether they were at the games or watching on TV. And for the players too, like I don't, I don't want them to forget like what transpired these last three weeks because these were a, just magical, magical three weeks for baseball, yeah. specifically American baseball. And so I'm hoping that content continues to trickle into the season and almost becomes like a mainstay for mm -hmm. for American baseball content. Like we we see clips, all, like we joke all the time about like the Bartolo Colon. Uh, home run just constantly being resurfaced yeah. in the same way, albeit more serious way and more meaningful way. I hope that the the content again that came from uh, these last three weeks, specifically this past weekend, mm -hmm. I hope that 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 carries over and becomes a staple in the things that we reference when we're talking about how the game should be played, how it should be approached, how it should be celebrated, how it should be enjoyed by fans. Yeah. All of that. I, I, I just truly hope that that sticks around. I agree. And this is coming from, and some of you longtime listeners know this, like we were late to this. We were late to this trend. I'm, I was late to this. I was late to bat flips and, and, you know, two or three buttons undone on a pitcher celebrating in the middle of the field. You know, I, I think, I think there are, there's always a time and place. I think there's always an understanding, you know, that you're not going to do those types of things when you're down 10, one or something like that in the seventh. So there's, there's always a time and place, but I'm all for emotion. I'm all for that kind of fire me up mentality and I love how the script can play out. And I love how I what what's the clip of when Jock was like still a Dodger. I don't know. I don't remember who um struck him out and they were just dancing. And he just kind of looked and gave him the head nod. He's like, all right. And then Bellinger got to him the next inning and looked at him and he's like, Uh-huh. This is our team now. So that back and forth, there is an inner script, there is an inner emotion that can be introduced. Um, I'm fully on board at this point. You know what I mean? I'm with it within reason, you know, don't be ridiculous, but Let fire me up. 
Yeah, let it show. And and if if guys like Mike Trout can turn the corner, I know anybody can. That's that's a fantastic point. Like if if, <laughs> if Wonder Bread Mike Trout can yeah. can unlock a new version of himself, or if can, this event can, we gotta, can unlock a new, version? we gotta upgrade him. What's the next bread? We gotta upgrade him from white bread, Wonder Bread. Dude, what what does he go to? What is he like? Uh, like a honey wheat. Is he a Sarah I, Lee honey wheat? I can I can dabble in that. Yeah, give me a little Sarah, bit of that. Sarah Lee is different. That's a what's the uh what's the we get it from Costco all the time. It's like artisanal. Like artis, oh, ar- artisanal. That bread is bread's real nice. He He's a bump up a, from Wonder though. We unlocked a new bread with, yeah. with Mike Trout. Might be creeping into like week. sourdough territory. All right, let's not get carried away. All right, all right. We one can hope, one can dream. One <laughs> Someday. Can dream. Let's get this last voicemail in. What's up, guys? Uh, kind of a bummer game last night, uh, but, you know, I'm not too too sad about it. What I wanted to point out is the – or I'm wondering if anybody else noticed the, uh, like, the ambiance music that they would play in really tense moments. I kind of like the Muddy Ball music. I did notice that. And my question is, one, if anybody else noticed it. Two, if it was being played in the stadium. Or three, if it was being played, you know, it was being produced for everyone watching on TV. Um, it definitely added to the really tense moments. They played it in between pitches during the uh, travel Otani at bat, and uh, they played it multiple other times throughout the tournament when I was watching. Um, I thought it was kind of cool, honestly. I'm just wondering if anybody else noticed it. Thanks, guys. Bye. That's a great segue into the, the championship game. Now we can mm-hmm. really just open up this this conversation. Uh, but to answer your question, I did notice that. And I I was genuinely curious whether or not that was like being played in the stadium it was it was giving me like real hard nba vibes because i know yeah. that they do that they they just play music casually like right. throughout the game and i'm like I, I could maybe get on board of this because i i'm the kind of person i love having a soundtrack for everything like yeah driving running at the right. gym at work i i just love having a soundtrack and being able to to match like what's going on or how mm-hmm. i'm feeling to whatever music I want to pick. And if if it's, if it's well done, if it's curated, well, like I think that could make a huge difference. Like I'm a, I'm a, I was a big fan. I'm curious to see, we may have to hit up, um, a friend and longtime listener, James, former fantasy winner. He's a, he's a season ticket holder with the Marlins. I wonder if they just do it a little different in Miami if they if that's a normal thing for them i kept hearing the um the batman like build up music mm. from the recent like christopher nolan batmans uh batman batmans batman batmans. movies it would have to be batmans, batmans cuz the movie is batman yeah. it would have to be batmans yeah but multiple movies batmans batmans batman uh, movies yeah that's probably better grammar taking heed of yeah, headed of, to heat it up. Uh, headed, heated. Anyway, no I liked taking it. Taking heat of what I'm saying right I, now. Heat of, yeah. I liked it. I like the sounds. I, I, I agree. I think there is, there is probably going to be this transition of like. I don't, I don't love or hate the organs. You know, the organ player. I think it's just kind of. It's old school, and it's probably something you expect to hear when you go to a ball game that's been around forever. But I don't know. To me, it doesn't. It doesn't really get me going. The, the charge or the you know clap your hands like that stuff is just. It's not enough of a buildup. I think that you can engage those emotions with certain soundtracks like that. And if we steal, in- yeah, what? No. I don't know. Get a just- good. A good charge can get me in the fired third up. inning. I think it. You can't play it after the fifth. That's I think fair. that's the end of of being able to use that kind of stuff. So when you, if you can build emotions, and if we steal it from movies, if we steal it from soundtracks, like whatever. But I agree, it's sick. I'm all for it. 
So the championship game. Let me just say, because the the biggest takeaway and the biggest conversation point of that championship game was obviously that final at bat. Mm -hmm. Let me just say. How infrequently as sports fans, as baseball fans, but as, as sports fans as a whole, we get to see the perfect moment, the dream mm -hmm. scenario. You know, if it's a guy's last season and it's it's we're down to the end of the season, it's his final game. It's like I want there to be I want there to be an at bat where he hits a home run. The, laces script, one, the script just works perfectly. Laces one into the gap. Yeah. Usually nine times out of ten, what happens on things like that? You get a pop out to the third baseman in right. foul territory. Right. You take that scenario, you you fill in the blank with whatever sport you follow, and it's gonna be more times than not something lackluster. But to your like you were saying, the fact that we had so many countries represented, we yeah. had so many games, we had we had so many lineup shifts. That's mm -hmm. something that I haven't really seen talked about. Like you got you got guys like slotting up and down the lineup. And it just happened to to. I mean, I, I think for the most part, Trout stayed where he was. Mm -hmm. But like moving guys around could and did impact. You know, like right who like who gets that last at bat based on how they've been hitting. Like if you get a guy that's hot hitting in front of Mike Trout, yeah, chances are you're gonna get to Mike Trout. But the fact that we got that, fr like it was. It would have still been cool, like if he was second up that inning and right. there's like one sure. out. It's like that's cool, like it's the ninth inning. But the fact that it came down to the final out, dude, everybody standing up, you know, the same way that they have been in all these spring training games that we keep hearing. Oh, right, about right, right, because, right, yeah. Because apparently this doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it was, dude. It was incredible, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll plug our guy Carabas. He. This was even before the the championship game. He had tweeted out um, how, and I, I I put it on a graphic. He had talked about how he misses like the the nineties, or he misses that era when we had like the flash bulbs. Oh from yeah, people like taking pictures at games. Like if you go back yeah. and watch, like you know, like Cal Ripken or guys like that, like when he breaks Lou Gehrig's just record, lights, just lights fireworks everywhere, yeah. dude. And I was just. That to me, that was the only thing that was missing because I can't imagine if we still had that for that final at bat, what that yeah, would have looked like. That's true. And j the fact that it just can't, like I said, the fact that it came down to the final at bat, you have Shohei, you have Trout, you have Shohei showing no signs of letting up, is pumping a hundred plus, even pumped a hundred and two in there on that. Yeah. I, I mean, it ended up being a ball, but the fact yeah. that. He's pumping a hundred and two against one of the world's best players as one of one of the, as and one he of the world's wanted best players. It. He wanted it. Shohei wanted that moment. He wanted that dude. Like he wasn't available, but he made himself available. I think there there was like some interview a couple years ago, of of um, oh. Who I don't remember who it was. Somebody from MLB Network was with the Angels and like interviewing him and stuff. And Shohei was like, Yeah, I'd love to face Trout someday. Oh no, I saw that clip yesterday. So it was Mike Trout and Shohei at the All Star weekend. Is that in, what it was? In okay. LA. That, okay. And Harold Reynolds, they were asking Harold Reynolds, that's who it was. Yeah. They were asking him, they were asking Mike Trout. They're like, So like if you guys ever matched up, like how do you think Shohei would approach mm -hmm. you? And I it was it was kind of eerie. He I mean, he didn't get it like exactly right, but he's like He's like, yeah, Shohei knows me, man. He knows that if I'm sitting fastball, he's gonna like he's gonna lay in a slider or something there. Or yeah. like I think he maybe a set a cutter or something. I'm like, that's yeah. kind of eerie because that's basically almost what happened. And yeah. then they flipped, they looked at Shohei and they're like, Would you want to face Mike Trout? And he was like, and he understood him and he was like, Yeah. And then Harold, I guess, had an epiphany and was like, World baseball classic. And yeah. sure enough, dude, the <laughs> last out it's just of perfect, the game. dude. And it like the baseball gods definitely blessed this tournament. You know what I mean? They blessed this tournament to set up that scenario. Name, there's nothing more perfect. I don't. I have no idea what Christopher Russo was saying on on first take the other day. 
I was hoping I you didn't even mention that guy, dude. No it, idea what that was. Dude, that, that was I'm, an absolute legendary at bat. It's what we all hope for. It's going to be played back years down the road. Like that is a memorable moment. And if they remain teammates or if they never face each other again, this moment will go down forever. And to be honest with you, I kind of knew Trout was done after he missed that 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 heater down a little on this low end, right down the middle. Like he likes those low fastballs. And once he missed that, I was like, yeah, I don't feel good about this. A couple I, sliders later and yeah. I love like digging into like the mental side of it, like the psychology behind it. And I saw a lot of posts talking about like comparing even just the seconds leading up to the at bat, they were they showed they showed Trout and just kind of his demeanor. They showed Shohei's face well, and they his were demeanor. It. They were both in it, I would argue, but Shohei, dude, you like you said, that guy wanted it, dude. Mm-hmm. Trout goes Trout goes up, does like his little nod to kind of just like, mm-hmm. you know, does like his little his little pre at bat nod to the pitcher. It happens to be Shohei. But then they flipped to Shohei, and dude's not even phased. Nope. Like he may have done something as he's like leaving the 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 on deck circle, but from the point where he steps into the box, dude is locked in. Yeah. You wouldn't even know it was his his teammate in the box, yeah. and he had this just killer look to him, and absolutely went after him. It was and it was like a, this is my game now. Absolutely. You know what I'm like, this is my country. This, this is, is my our, game. This yeah. is our tournament to win. This is my moment. Baseball is mine now. I am the guy. And I'm the, f- the captain now. He, that's what he was saying. <laughs> and, and the fact that he lays a slider in there just to let Filthy. you know that he's capable of doing that in that scenario, yeah. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> I, you want to talk about the respect I gained for Mike Trout over the last three weeks? Dude, I'm. Yeah fully on board and i, I, I don't want to sound like a know, like a homer now and i don't want people being uh, like I, know. I mean look if i get the hate for being like oh welcome to the party pal yeah I, I i it's it's deserved but just just go to bed tonight knowing that your friend kyle is fully on board yeah with shohei otani dude yeah. i'm all about the the shohei show now i i so after the strikeout, I, I love the emotion, throwing the glove, throwing the hat. Everybody runs to him. Per, like just the exact celebration that I think everyone was hoping for. But when you talk about just like the overall respect all those guys have, everybody on from the Japan side bowing, tipping their caps, Bringing Ichiro's jersey out gave me chills. I saw that, dude. That was sick because, like, and and we've always been against, like, the bring jersey. Like, the guy's not dead. But for this, like, Ichiro is, he is that man, monumental being for Japan baseball players. To come through and, and do what he did for MLB and just, he is an icon. And that is something that I, I just, I loved all the respect, dude, and, like, I don't know if you saw the pregame speech that Otani gave to his clubhouse. He's like, I know we admire them, but like today, let's just go beat them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't anything disrespectful. It was like the admiration is there. Of course it's there, but let's just put that away for a minute and go do this. Let's go do this thing and become bigger than them. And they did. And like, I, I'm not even upset. I'm genuinely, after the last strike, I was just, I, I couldn't help but smile because this is 100% good for baseball. All of it was, even when we were at the game getting our teeth kicked in by Mexico, you just saw like the joy of other fan bases and you saw like the happiness of other people. And it's, I think that's why it's so perfect of the timing. We would be so different if this was happening in like November, December, after a season, you watch your team lose, maybe your team lost in the World Series, and now you just have like a, you're surrounded by bitterness. The fact that it is this spring training timing, and you're getting ramped up and geared for the season, you're getting excited, and you just, you can't help just be like, you know what, it's all right that the the U.S. took the L, because that just, 
was a storybook ending, a storybook tournament, everything you could hope for. Yeah, it, on that note, my my thoughts following that championship game were basically the same, if not exactly the same way I felt after that Mexico loss, just the, right. the beatdown that Team USA had out in Phoenix. Like, you're a little bummed, but... Like I just couldn't be upset. Like yeah. I, I, when when Trout struck out, I, I, honestly, I was more mad at like I, I I love me some Mookie, but I was more upset about that at bat, kind of taking the wind out of that like that yeah. situation to where it's like okay, if Mike Trout is capable, that would have been huge of doing something if, big if here. Mookie got on, yeah, or like even if he got out. Just yeah. having somebody on, but like having McNeil on first base mm-hmm. or set wherever he would be in that in that scenario, I'm just like that would have been more electric of an at bat if you've got Trout at the plate with the go like as the go ahead run. Yeah, but you know he strikes out. Show like I said, Trill Hayes throwing his hat, throwing his glove. I mean, I I I don't exactly remember how it went down, but I was probably like, ah, that sucks. But then immediately I just go into full on like admiration mode where i'm yeah. just like this this is awesome yeah like, dude. this is awesome like there's so no, there was no like no one lost you know what i mean like no one lost if you're a true lover of baseball like this it didn't matter it really didn't matter that the u.s lost sure it'd be great if they got the gold medal all those guys want it that's why they're doing it i understand that side of it but from the fan side dude we we just we didn't lose we got everything we hoped for everything we needed and it was perfect from the usa side of things i really hope this serves as like a little bit of a wake-up call probably like it's, it's probably better that it didn't end yeah. the way we wanted it to originally what's that that's three gold medals for for japan to, at this point for this for this tournament they've won three Is times three? yeah us only has sure one i think or two i think us has two no i think us has one 2017 i thought let me check. 2017 was it i thought they i won thought it in... i thought it was three and one that sounds right actually yeah 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 i mean hopefully this does wake them up a little bit yeah and... japan has so japan uh japan won in 2006 japan won in 2009 dr won in 13 us won in 2017 and japan won in 2023 so three to one yeah yeah that's sick man but john smoltz brought up a good point i know he gets buried for a lot of stuff and i'm not saying he's the best but he did bring up an excellent point that like it just seems to me like the transition of japanese players into mlb isn't isn't as scary as it used to be yeah i think that they've closed that gap where the the competitiveness and the the ability it's very transferable, very transferable. And where, like, even myself, I had doubts about the Yoshida signing with, yep. with the Red Sox, right? And, like, you say. as a Red Sox fan, like, you're a little uncertain. But when you watch this, you're like, no, nah, he's going to be fine. <laughs> he's going to he's yeah, be just like, fine. Transparency, like, integrity yeah. move here. I was on the fence about Yoshida. But then after seeing it, when we were in Phoenix and we had our, oh, well, the fantasy draft is having to be redone because of oh, some yeah. technical issues. Yeah. But in the original draft that we did when you and I were out there for our fantasy league, I was like, you know what? I'm on board with this guy yeah. now after seeing what I've seen. And I drafted him. Yeah. Do you think I'm going to draft a guy that I'm like, I don't know if the, if his skills are going to translate over? Like, no. And They're I get coming. it. It's a fantasy <laughs> draft. It's not. There's not that yeah. much at stake. But like. That just shows you going back to the whole like paradigm shift and just like the perception yep. of these kinds of guys. Like I'm all about it now. Like I I I understand and I'm and I'm I'm always gonna have like a little bit of skepticism just because sure. it's by default, by nature, it's a it's a different league, it's a different continent. Mm-hmm. But to your point, that gap has closed drastically for me. So I'm not yeah. I'm gonna be much quicker, much more prone to believe that these guys are capable of ha- not only hanging in in major league baseball but like being successful superstars and, yeah in this and game. show shohei is definitely i mean like ichiro over the length of a career yes but shohei is now like hey a japanese baseball player 
can rule the world. And when you look at this whole thing and you take, you just, you take out the attendance, you take out the argument of, of the rules, you take out the length of the game, you take, about, you take out the location, you take out all things. And if you can take away, if you're a kid, you're 14, 15 years old or younger, and you watched any of this, no matter where you are in the world, you feel like you can make it. And I think that's the most beautiful part about what this was. Doesn't matter where you are, you can make it. You can get there. Name anything else that's been able to do, have that impact and grow the game that way. That's the most important thing, I think, to me, to you, to anybody that's in baseball that wants to pass the torch and hopefully it keeps growing. That's what you hope for. That we had all those kids fall in love with baseball all around the country or all around the world. I'm sorry, all around the world having a feel that they can make it. And notice how all of this happened without any of the new rule changes. It's true. But that's a conversation <laughs> for a different day. Uh, but to your, to your point, um, the, the whole sentiment of baseball one, and I think we maybe even already mentioned that a time or two, that to me, that's, that's kind of the, the biggest takeaway here from this whole thing is baseball one, yep. whether you're a U.S. fan, whether you're a Japan fan, like I get it. Baseball is, king over there it seems baseball still has a ways to go over here there are other countries that were in this tournament where baseball is more important than it is in the united states there's countries that were in this tournament where baseball means less than it does in the united states mm -hmm. but baseball as a whole took a giant step forward and i think it starts with the kids like mm -hmm. having them witness what's happening here to see a guy like Mike, Mike Trout kind of break out of his shell mm -hmm. that that's huge for the growth of the game. And I, I truly believe with this being the best world baseball classic that we've seen to date, I truly believe we're finally now at the point. And like you said, it, moving forward with, with general managers having a much harder time saying no to letting their, these guys participate. I think we're at the point, hopefully, now starting in 2026, where this is just going to be, it's just going to take over baseball mm -hmm. when the time comes for it. Yep. And I've seen a lot of conversations surrounding like the time frame of it, the, the when it happens, whether it should be at the end of the year, right. whether it should be during the all star break. I, I, I won't speak for you Keep myself. It. I love it where it is. Keep like, it. I absolutely love it where it is. I, uh, selfishly as a as a american baseball fan mm -hmm. i i love that we almost we got this dose of playoff baseball this three week window of playoff baseball before the season evens we haven't even got we still have a, right. a week until opening day right and i i honestly feel like i just stepped off a plane after watching a full season of baseball or <laughs> at the very least a full yeah. postseason of baseball i agree i agree like, that's an awesome place to be. Yeah. Um, my closing thoughts, just for Team USA. Um, I, I loved Mark DeRosa when he was playing. I've loved him on MLB Network. I love him even more now. I think he was the absolute perfect selection. He's at that right point where, you know, he, he hasn't had that managerial experience, but you throw him into the fire like this. I think he did excellent. With his hands tied, not to mention. The like hands that's, tied. That's something that doesn't get talked about enough. Timing of these pitchers, the the pitch limits, the all this kind of stuff. Um, it, it was just excellent, excellent job to add a staff with Ken Griffey Jr., Andy Pettit, Brian McCann, um, Alou was in there. Like we just, there's so many, uh, so many well done things by, by team USA in general. I'm super, super happy with how they did it. Um, I, I hope there's a couple adjustments, but if D row isn't a manager in 2026, I hope he comes back and I hope he, I hope he does uh, the same thing he did, man. Bring a crew of legends in. Unfinished I mean, like, business, dude, unfinished business. Fire and me up. did you see the video of Griffey taking BP and going yard, firing everybody up? Like, dude, uh, it, this, this scratched every itch, every itch 
It did everything right. And if and if you didn't get a chance to get locked in to this one, you didn't get a chance to go see it in person. If you can make it happen in 2026, I promise you, you will not regret it. You will not regret it. Dude, I'm I'm so glad you pushed you because I'll give you full credit. You were the one that like pushed this along because I remember <laughs> I was like, let's you, like, go. Threw, you can go back. I, I don't even know what episode it was, but you can go back and find the episode where you're like, dude, do you think we could like make it like we should make that happen? And I was like, in my, in my mind, I'm thinking <laughs> I'd rather say I'd rather save it for like the postseason, like yeah. go all in on a postseason. But I'm like, you know what? Like it's different. And then it finally picked, started picking up steam. And then we go out there and I left that thing. And I told you, and I think I mentioned it like on the podcast or the vlog or something. I was like, this may have been the best, like generally speaking, best baseball experience I've ever had. And so yeah. to your point, yes, if you can absolutely go or if you can go to the 2026 WBC or one in the future, absolutely do it. You will not regret it. It's just an awesome window into so many different cultures and brands and styles mm-hmm. of baseball and not just what you see on the field, but, but outside in the, in the, in the bleachers outside mm-hmm. of the stadium after wins, after losses, like you, there's so much to take in and there, we live in such a window as American baseball fans and the, Not only that, but the arrogance of American baseball fans to say, well, if I don't care about the World Baseball Classic, then nobody cares about the World Baseball Classic. That's just not true. I've got on my camera roll on my phone, I have countless videos that would say otherwise, that people do care about the World Baseball Classic. And we saw it play out night after night after night, and it culminated with what we've talked about is one of those at bats where you'll remember where you were Mm -hmm. for that at bat. And it's like you said, I think that says it best. It scratched every itch and Mm -hmm. you just, you didn't come away from this event feeling like you, you got short change, you got gypped or you, you wanted, you wanted something else out of it. I mean, aside from maybe a, a U.S. win, you really got everything you wanted out of it. And like I was saying, I think it's probably better for American baseball that we, that we didn't ultimately win. Because like I said, hopefully it pushes these guys right. a little bit to say, cause, cause I think win or lose for the U S I think you were all, you were already looking at guys next time around for this event going, mm-hmm. you know what? I need to get on board. Kind of like Mike Trout did back in 2017, but having that extra ed, that push to go, you know what? Like we, we came up a little short. Yeah. We kind of, I won't say choked, but we, we missed out. On on this the gold was a, this was on the good global L. stage, this was a necessary L. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. I think 2026 could be something huge if they play their cards right. Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent job all the way around, and we have the eyes of all sports fans, and that's that is huge, and you have other leagues wanting to replicate what just happened. Big check mark. Big success. Huge. Any other thoughts? Are we uh are we officially switching yeah. gears now? It's it's now can, baseball season, baby. Can it's we take like, an exhale and collect ourselves and yeah. get into MLB mindset here? I think we can. Hot takes episode coming in next week. Uh I have to do just a ton of digging, ton of research. <laughs> I need to I need to get locked back in and he figure says out that, what's going on. And then on. he's going to show up the day of the recording and say I will do your nothing. boy is going to ride on gut <laughs> takes and gut takes only. Yeah. Well, I we're going to recap how things went last year with our predictions, so maybe that'll tell me if gut is correct or stupid guts always the move i don't care how bad you look. it's always the move it's it's the best way to go oh man i'll die on that hill uh so yeah like nate said hot takes episode hot takes and predictions for the 2023 season that episode will be coming to you early next week you will not want to miss that it's like i said it's our uh, and i'm not making this up like i have the numbers to prove it the most downloaded episode year after year for us it's the thing that people are talking about the most. Gets the people going. Gets the people going. Tune in for that. But other than that, that's all I got for the people. 
I love you guys. Don't go chasing curveballs. We love you all. And as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.